Mirror, mirror on the wall, show me the world after the fall. Yes, I took the liberty to freely adapt this very well-known and debated passage from the Snow White story by the Grimm brothers. I do it because most of our lives are spent looking at a collective reflection presented by this magic mirror of the world in an unconscious manner. Do we like what we see? Sometimes, but most often than not, we don't. Yet, we stare at this mirror that can only reflect that which we presented and forget that the mirror is even there. Then we try to paint over the image or place some props on the mirror's surface to change what we see. However, inevitably, the paint peels off, the props fall off, and this image continues to haunt us. Given that we forgot the mirror we are staring at in the first place, it takes a long, long time and effort to realize a simple fact. If we want the image to be different, if we don't like or are even downright shocked with that reflected image that haunts us, we must then have the original present a different image to the mirror and not try to change the image itself. The mirror is extremely honest, and if it shows dishonesty, and it does, oh yes, it does, then it is reflecting what the original is, even if they try to hide, or even if they forgot they were as ugly as that. Neither the mirror, which is a vehicle to convey the reflected image, nor ourselves can edit out or edit in anything from or into the reflection itself. And it is that simple truth, that realization that the mirror is only casting back at us, hauntingly, a confrontation with who we are, collectively and individually, that is the key to any transmutation of that external image. Now, please, if you are staring at the mirror right now, please do not say Candyman five times. No, I said don't... Oh, fuck. Too late. The pull of curiosity was too strong. You really wanted to see the deepest reflections of ourselves? Well, the shadow has been summoned. Are you going to be its victim? Be my victim. I am the writing on the wall, the whisper in the classroom. Without these things, I am nothing. Or perhaps, are you going to understand that it is only as scary as we are to ourselves? You see, we were told not to summon them, but we inevitably do. Why? Because the shadows are also us. Rejected fragments that require our attention, our transmutation, our moral choice. Is the shadow scary? then we need to realize it is we who are scary. We fear our shadows because they cast an awful reflection. So we throw stones at the mirror, at the image reflected there, and we shatter the mirror itself, getting another seven years of sheer bad luck. It is no cycle to be in, for sure. You see, the mirror reflects the collective image we all share, but in that collective image is where we can find also our individual reflection, a sort of find Waldo kind of thing. And as we can only be responsible for our own choices, our own originals that we present to the mirror, each choice that changes our small portion of the reflected image inevitably changes the whole. And the more individual originals realize the reflection and choose morally from that true morality that needs no explanation or reasoning and that cannot be written in words, the more the collective image changes altogether. As that is done, the shards of the broken mirror are gradually put back together. The bad luck of breaking it reverses, and, most importantly, the reflected shadow no longer victimizes us. It will continue to tell you, Be my victim. But you will no longer be swayed to do so, realizing that this shadow is a mere rejected whisper in the classroom, a renegade 
writing on the wall of our own selves provides us with the needed tools to make a choice, a moral choice, to expose the shadow to itself, to break its pride, to expose its shame, and to finally transmute it, to redeem it. Hell is a place where shadows are locked into, a place where they can only brew hate for their creators, before they are called back to reveal themselves as the reflections on their creator's mirror. We are only shocked at seeing those shadows reflected in the world mirror if we did not realize that it is a potential us left rejected, unattended, and locked in the prison hell of the subconscious where the cruel company of all the other shadows locked in there make hatred for us their single thought. Just like our prison system in the world, right? Again, a reflection on the magic mirror, an honest reflection, albeit unpleasant and shameful. Shadows are potential us who chose so immorally that they lost all touch, even if the faintest, with truth. They think that if they can defeat the original's own pride and humiliate the original as they watch and eventually kill the original, they think that all this will bring them redemption. Yet that is merely a reflection of a reflection. Two mirrors facing each other, reflecting infinitely. Shadow can only touch shadow. If we have a dog and that dog bites someone, we are responsible. Just as if we have a dog and that dog is useful and pleasant and joyful to our neighbors, we are responsible. It is our choice, not the dogs, that make the dog. Are we brewing shadows in immorality? Are we going against that which we innately know is true and good and just shrugging it off as I'm doing my job? Then our dog will bite and eventually will even come to hate us and bite our own compatible selves. I do love my dog analogy because it was a dog that really showed me and truly awakened in me the ability to love. Love is a choice, continuously made until it reveals that we are and have always been that choice, regardless of the ugly reflections we saw on the mirror over time. Love is sacrifice, chosen to be done freely and voluntarily as an act of grace, as a gift that gives life and does not take it. After all, life never dies, only death dies. And as the shadows that are made of death die, if they have been blessed by the original's attention and love, if their shame and guarding pride has been broken, then they are redeemed and no longer writings on the wall or whispers in the classroom, but individual living pieces of truth. As was stated in other contemplations, the shadow can only eat that which is compatible with itself. It can only eat shadows. And the promised feast it got invited to that would reward all its diligent work, following the whispers and the writings on the wall, towards the application of hatred against the originals, the living. Well, in that feast, the only course served will be themselves. Shadow can only eat shadow. And only shadow can cast a reflection on its own foggy mirror. Truth and life do not punish. Punishment is the obsession of shadows, their feeding ground. As the shards of the living broken mirror are restored back into their proper individual place by their own choice, the mirror of shadows reflecting our rejected hells shrinks and shrinks until it eventually returns to the nothingness it was. We gave it life. We animated it. 
we blew into its nostrils a bit of our own life, only so that it could come back and haunt us, and demand that we be its victim, only to show us who we are beyond reflections, and allow us to choose differently. Mirror, mirror on the wall, show us life that we are all.